Hey, today we're going to trade stocks using Python and Robinhood. And we're going to do that from the command line by using two Python packages. The first is called Click, which makes it easy to define a command line interface in Python by just writing a bunch of Python functions and adding these function decorators. The second package we'll use is called Robin Stocks, which is just a wrapper around the private Robinhood API, and it'll let you do anything the Robinhood uh, mobile app or web app will do, but you can just call it from your code, uh, your custom code, which is what allows us to create this custom command line interface for it. So to get started, we're gonna install these two Python packages, and I'm gonna go to PyCharm, where I've created a new directory called Robin, and I made a new file called robin.py. From the command line here, I can install the two Python packages using pip3, and I'll type pip3 install, and I'll install click and robin stocks. And we'll, that will install both of the packages and uh, make them available in the virtual environment I've already set up. Uh, if you don't have a virtual environment, it will just install them globally. So to get started, we're just gonna import click and we'll import our robin stocks library as rh just to make it simpler to execute and type um, and i'm just going to dive right into click we just need a main function to get started so we'll do uh, if name equals main we'll execute main and main here is just going to be what we call a click group which is just a group of commands and this function will only execute um, when any of the subcommands execute. So I'll show you what that means very shortly. I'm just gonna say hello from main and fix my decorator there. And if I type Python uh, robin.py, you'll see nothing's really executed yet. It just says usage robin.py options and help, but we didn't execute any commands. So to create a command, uh, we need to type a command in so we'll uh, attach a command to our main uh, group. And then our first uh, command we're gonna create is called quote. And quote is just gonna accept a list of symbols. And then for each of those symbols, um, we'll say getting a stock quote for symbol and then we we'll use Python string formatter to just say dot format and uh, print the symbol. And then our command will execute. So we'll run this. Um, if we run this, now you see quote is available as a command just because I did main.command and I have a function called quote. So it's very easy to find a new command. Um, and I'm also gonna make a command called watch list. Um, and then I'll leave it at that. And so I'll type uh, getting quotes for watch list. And if I type robin.py again, you'll see we have two commands available. And I can document those commands easily by using a help option here. And so I'll say gets a stock quote for one or more symbols. And then watch list, I'll say help equals uh, gets quotes for all stocks in your watch list. If I run that, you'll see now my commands are nicely documented. So that's great. But how do I actually pass uh, the symbols I want? So ideally what I want to do is just type Apple, Microsoft, Twitter, like that, and then get a list of all the quotes. But you'll see it says no such command, right? So what I would want to do is type quote and then pass in all of those parameters. But it says got unexpected extra arguments. So we haven't defined what the arguments to this function is yet. So what we can do is main.argument, or click.argument, I'm sorry, click.argument, and just specify our arguments. And so we can say argument is called symbols. And if we do that, um, you'll see this won't work yet. Uh, so I'll run this, um, and then we'll type the name of a symbol. Um, so you see I pass in quote, AAPL, and what it since I'm looping through it, uh, this went through letter by letter since it's just a string. So I'll just print symbols for now. And it'll do hello from main and apple. So what you see happens here is whenever 
Uh, this command is a part of this group. It executes main first, and then it executes uh, executes my main command. So I'll show you how that's very useful in a moment. So what we'll do here to accept multiple symbols, there's this parameter called nargs, and you can specify like the number two if it expects two positional arguments, but I'm gonna specify negative one so that I can pass any number of arguments. And if I do that, you'll see if I type this again, you'll see hello from main, and you'll also see uh, Apple, Microsoft, and Twitter is actually a tuple here instead of a single string. So now, this will work like we expect. So we can do for symbol and symbols, print, and we run it again, and it'll say getting a stock quote for Apple, Microsoft, and Twitter. That's perfect. So now let's make it actually do something. So uh, let's use our Robin stocks uh, package here that's unused so far. And if I go to the documentation, if you go to robin-stocks.com, you see there's great documentation for this library, and you can list all of the functions in the library. And one of the functions is called get quotes, but there's also tons of other stuff. You can get option positions, you can trade crypto, you can do all kinds of good stuff. Um, so you see this has get quotes, which accepts actually a list of input symbols. And so we can just pass those symbols that come in directly to the Robinhood API. And so I'm gonna run that. So I'll do uh, Robin, so I'll do rh.get quotes and just pass it our list of symbols. And I'll assign that to quotes and print quotes and let's just see if that works. Okay, and so you see what we got is a 401 client error, unauthorized for URL. So Robinhood's just not gonna let anyone hit their API and start doing stuff. Uh, we need to authenticate ourselves and show that we have a Robinhood account and be able to pass in a token and do all of that magic in order to access uh, Robinhood's API here. So to do that, in our list of functions here, you'll see there's a section on logging in and out. And simple, you just have a dot login function and accepts a username and password. Makes it really easy to authenticate against your account. So we'll use that, I'll do rh.login and a username and some password. Now I'm in a video here, I don't wanna show you my username and password uh, and you don't really want to put your username and password inside of a function like this. So what I've done here is created a JSON file and all that JSON file has is any configuration for our program. And I just made a simple uh, key and value here, username, your username and password, your password, which is great. And so I can use regular uh, Python functions in order to read this file. Uh, so let's do a login. And so we'll do content equals, and in Python you can read a file by just opening it up and I'll do config.json. You notice I showed you sample config.json, uh, but really I'm naming the file config.json, but I wanna show you my real username and password, so I'm not gonna show you that one. But put, put this configuration in config.json and you can open it up and do .read, and that'll just get you a regular uh, string. Um, but that string is actually JSON and we wanna be able to work with it, so we can import the JSON library and do json.loads content and we'll get a nice Python dictionary with our config. And let's print that out just to, no, actually let's don't print that out because I don't wanna show you. Um, actually I will, I'll do sample config first and then uh, print out the config just so you can see how that works. Okay, so if we run that now and do our quotes, you'll see username, your username, password, your password. So we got our dictionary, we got what we need and now we just need to call the login function. So I'll remove that print there, and I'll also use the regular config.json file, and then we'll do config username and config password. Okay, so we'll log in, and then we should be able to get our quotes. And let's see if that works. So I'll do it again. Bam, so now you see a list of all the quotes, that bracket there, so you know you have a list. Uh, let's flatten this out a little bit. So instead of for symbol and symbol, we'll do for quote and quotes. And then we'll do uh, getting a stock quote for symbol dot format. Uh, and then we'll do uh, the symbol, which is part of this uh, list. So we'll do quote symbol. And then also we'll just print out uh, the quote itself. So we'll run that. 
so that's not just one big list and we'll block it out a little bit and you see getting a stock quote for Twitter ask price 4134 so we can simplify our output here um, so let's just uh, let's make it very simple like a table like structure we'll do dot format the quote symbol and then the ask price if you do that you see we got a nice table Apple Microsoft Twitter and the current ask price for those stocks and we can add more and more stuff as we go along you see there's a lot of interesting attributes here but we're gonna show the ask price just to show that it works okay so let's go ahead and fill in another uh, function here this watch list just so that we have two commands to work with and then we'll group them all together so the watch list here is uh, what I want to do here is I just want I don't want to use Robin Hood's watch list I just want to make a simple text file of uh, stocks I'm interested in that way um, when I'm thinking of ideas, I can just type them in this text file uh, while you know while I'm sitting around, and then add or remove from this watch list as needed. So I got my watch list now, and then I'll just type in a bunch of ticker symbols: Cisco, Microsoft, uh, Baba. Uh, what else can we do? Uh, Procter and Gamble. Um, let's do U.S. Steel. Let's do uh, Zillow. And uh, let's do one more. Let's think uh, Visa. Okay. So we got a list of symbols in our watch list, and there's just one symbol on each line. And so we can just use uh, normal Python functions to read that file uh, line by line and split it up into a list of symbols. And so let's do that real quick. Um, so we'll open our watch list. So we can just do this with open watch list um, as... Um, let's do as F, I believe how you do it, and then we'll print F. Okay, so I don't want that command anymore. So now I can just type uh, robin.py and see my list of commands, and there's one called watch list. So I'll run that, and you see it looks like we got some kind of file handle here, uh, but we need a little more than that. Uh, I think we can do read, yeah, read lines. Let's see if that's what we want. And that's just, yeah, so you see now we have a list of the symbols. It looks like there's these new lines in here. Uh, so we want a slightly different function here. So uh, let's do uh, f.read, which gets us a string, and then we can do split lines on it. And that gets us what we want. So now we just have a list of symbols. So let's get our symbols and assign them. So f.read.split lines. And so now we have a list of symbols here and we can keep going with that. And so now that we have a list of symbols, we can know we can do RH equals. So we can do uh, quotes equals RH dot get quotes and we can pass in our symbols and print out our quotes, right? So if I run that, okay, you see the 401 client error it says unauthorized and that's because I didn't log in when we ran this command. You see we logged in up here and there's some functionality for doing the login, uh, which is kind of uh, repetitively, you know, I'm not gonna just put it right there. But as I mentioned earlier, you see it does this hello from main since it's part of the group. So here I can just put, I can just copy that code up here. It just makes sure I log in beforehand. And let's just have main uh, do the pre-authentication step. And so now uh, main will execute, I'll be logged in, and then I can just do the logic of calling uh, the command that I want. So now if I do Robin watch list, main will execute, which logs me in. And then you see, I get my quotes from my watch list, which is a big old uh, list of quotes. Uh, so we'll do the same thing again, where we do uh, for quote in quotes, uh, print the quote. And let's see how that works. So yeah, now you see we have a list that includes every single thing uh, that we had in our watch list, and we can maintain our watch list. So now we got two ways of getting quotes. One, we can pass in uh, a number of arguments, and then the other one, we can uh, get them from a file using our watch list. So I'm gonna stop it there for now to keep this video short and create a new video which covers more concepts. You see we covered uh, a bunch of things already, including how to use click to create commands, and also how to uh, call the Robinhood API and authenticate to get a list of stock quotes. In the next video, I'm gonna show you how to actually buy and sell stocks we're gonna show you how to customize this UI. So instead of using the print command, we're gonna use clicks echo command, uh, and we'll keep building on top of this and make it more and more powerful. 
So tune in for the next video. Uh, that's all for now.